Hey, welcome everyone to the 34th episode of the 10 Minute Trades podcast. My name is Lee Goldstein. I'm the trading director, and I want to go through the recap of the week, July 18th through the 22nd. So let's start with our opening trades. I'd like to group them all together because there's a lot of them. And rather than go through everyone individually, you know the routine, how we've been doing this. And basically the opening trades are still working very well. We had a stop here and there. I think we had one gold stop, one oil stop, but overall the opening trades are still profitable. We're occasionally trading the NQ open. Basically the way that I'm doing it is if I feel that I know and have a good sense for the way the NQ is going to open, then we're taking that trade. You can also just take signals on the NQ open if you'd like to, but it is a more inconsistent open. It's harder to trade. So we're only taking it when it offers the best opportunity for a winning trade. But overall, the opens are still working very well for us, gold and oil. Now, Tuesday, we started again with the opens, which were fine, but we also are starting our earnings season. We had at eight in the morning, building permits and housing starts, which is not a very impactful report anymore. I really chose not to trade it and it was a good decision. It wouldn't have been a very viable trade for profit at all. So we're going to keep an eye on that report. It might not be worth trading for a while. It's just not moving the markets very much. But we did have an excellent, excellent earning trade on Netflix. It was the first earnings trade of the quarter. We've been making money very nicely on Netflix. This is our second quarter in a row with a good profit, over $400 on Netflix. And then interestingly, the API crude oil report was after Netflix earning on Tuesday and there was no fill. So API had four positive trades in a row. So four weeks in a row. And then we had no fill this week. So you know how superstitious I am, but when I have a report that's actually trading well and it has a stop out or a no fill, then I'm very excited about trading it the next report. So next week, the API report, I'm looking for a winner because it had no fill this past week. Then on Wednesday, we had Canada's core CPI. We're trading that now as a trap trade. Had a very small win. I was a little bit impatient, got out a little bit quick on that. Existing home sales, I chose not to trade it. It's had very little impact on the markets. Then we had the oil, uh, crude oil inventory report, which after two winning weeks in a row was a stop. So again, that's been trading very well, that report. I'm looking forward to next week for a win. And we had the 20 year bond auction and what we're starting to see on the bond auctions is they're working better. So we're going to start trading the bond auctions live regularly um, because they're working. So this coming week, we have a really exciting schedule. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but for now, the 20 year bond auction was a very nice winner. And then we segued into Tesla late Tuesday afternoon. And again, Tesla was a nice winner. So our first two earning trades in a row this quarter, both winners, and we're looking forward to next week, which is a, a lot of earnings trades. Thursday, we had the ECB main refi rate. We got stopped on that report. The opens were fine. Uh, the unemployment claims, Philly Fed was a good range trade. If you had chosen to trade it, the range trade worked. I've been watching Thursdays trying to get a really good setup for the weekly Thursday unemployment claims with or without news. So we're doing some major testing on those reports. And then uh, the natural gas storage report was an amazing profitable trade, $700 winner on natural gas. It, it saved the day Thursday. It was just a great trade. Friday morning, we got up at 3 a.m. and we traded the French Flash Manufacturing Services PMI report. That's a mouthful. We stayed in the room for the German version of the same report. And when they were both done, we were up over $400. They are worth getting up for. I say this all the time. If you see me get up at four in the morning, three in the morning, two in the morning, anytime really bizarre trading hours in the morning, get up and join us in the trade room. You can bet that I'm trading live. I'm not simulating at three in the morning. It's just not worth getting up if you're not going to trade a real full-blown trade, right? 
So we made a nice profit on those. The gold and the oil open on Friday were both profitable. A couple of people had a little bit of a struggle with the oil open. Canada retail sales had a very impactful move. That was a report we were testing, but looks like it may be going forward a good trap trade. And then another trade that we hadn't been live on looks great going forward. Flash Manufacturing Services, the U.S. version. We traded it last month live and it hit a couple of our targets, but it wasn't it didn't inspire tremendous confidence, but after today, the gold breakout looked good and the NQ range trade looked great. Uh, and the gold, actually, I should say the gold breakout also looked great. So going forward, a very exciting report. We're going to add it to our repertoire uh, of trades. Should be a good one. Again, going forward, flash manufacturing. It's interesting how all four of those reports take place the same day. The U.S. version the British version, the Eurozone, ver this Eurozone version, I can't talk, the Eurozone, the Eurozone version and the uh, German and French versions. Actually, really interesting, potentially profitable trades. I'm always surprised that the Eurozone version doesn't really move the market much. I think because the French and German reports do move the market the euro is what we're trading that by the time it gets to that 4 a.m. euro version it's just the markets kind of petered out from the reports but if you see me get up early get up and join us those were profitable trades it was really good to make four hundred dollars in the morning before you even come into the trade room next week we have a whole bunch of earnings trades don't miss Apple don't miss Amazon Facebook also so get ready Come into the trade room, download the software, version 10, www.10minutetrades.com forward slash login. Get the new version of the software and start learning how to use it with us in the trade room. And I'll see you next week for earnings, GDP, all sorts of excellent FOMC statement. Holy crow. Lots of really good reports next week. I'll see you in the trade room. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching episode 34 of the pod of the podcast, a recap of week July 18th through the 22nd, another profitable week at 10 minute trades.